But, like, it's so true. Like, America, believe everything you read. Because, like, you're smart and I'm stupid. Like, for real. Come on, y'all. Popstar was brought by ambulance to a Los Angeles hospital. It said that, you know, like, I was drinking all the time. And, like, it's so right. It was so true. I mean, oh my god. It was so right. And, like, my management totally knew what they were doing when they sent me to rehab. So right, you know? And it just, like, I'm just gonna cry right now because, like, the world is so nice. Like, this lady, she told me, she said, Brittany, go to the light. Go to the light and see Jesus, okay? And I was like, oh, my God. He's barbaric. I mean, who gets to do that to someone, you know? And she was just manipulated and used. And he wants to say that he protected her? No, he caged her. He caged her. How are you supposed to know? Like my brother, he's like, well, you didn't know this and he'll pick on me. I'm like, well, I'm too busy selling 50 million records. So. Oh, okay. Oh my God, this is the cheapest. Being Brittany trying to launch my rocket into the trust. Welcome to BJ Investigates, a show I just created, might never do again. In last week's episode, we talked about the folklore behind the missing $600 million and how that number came to be thrown around in relation to Britney's fortune. We talked about how Britney's business manager, Lou Taylor of TriStar Sports and Entertainment had major conflicts of interest, put Britney's money into her own investment firm, and then hid the evidence from Britney with the court's permission. Make sure to check that one out if you missed it. And it might help you to watch that one first before watching this video because that one kind of informs what I said in this one. It's not really a part two over here, but kind of part two. In today's episode, we're gonna try to answer the question, where is Britney's money? So let's go all the way back to almost 20 years ago, to January 2004. The world was shocked and outraged to discover that America's undisputed sweetheart had married her childhood friend, Jason Alexander, in a shotgun wedding in Las Vegas, Nevada. 55 hours later, that marriage would be annulled. So let's dig into the whole 55-hour marriage a little deeper to get some context on the full situation. Then we're gonna talk about Britney's money. So in January 2004, Britney Spears, being the free-ish woman that she was at the time, went to Las Vegas with her childhood friend from Louisiana, Jason Alexander. So while Britney and Jason were in the club on this Vegas trip, they had the idea to get married at a small chapel, and then they actually did it. Britney was truly testing what she was able to get away with, as being a free woman has always been a high priority for her. She has said time and time again that freedom is what keeps her going. But when her family caught wind of this impromptu wedding, story goes that Britney's team rushed down to Las Vegas to put a stop to the wedding. And once it was too late to stop the wedding, they wanted to annul it altogether. Now, according to Jason, that's when, quote, the men in black swooped in along with Britney's mom and other family members. And they made Jason and Britney sign paperwork, quote, under duress to end their marriage. Jason says, we didn't want to annul it. They lied to us. It was always about controlling Britney and controlling her money. Jason goes on to say, quote, I was tricked by her mom, dad, and lawyers into signing the annulment. I was told our marriage could hurt Britney's career and I loved her. And I was a naive kid who had been raised to trust and respect my elders, just like she had. Jason says, we were told that if we still felt the same way about each other in six months, we could have a big white wedding. They strung Jason along, he says, for 30 days, which was about how long it took to get the annulment finalized, so he couldn't contest it. And then Jason says they changed Britney's number so he could not talk to her. He says there's always been dark forces in her life. He goes on to say, quote, we were in bed talking and she asked me to go on tour with her. I told her I couldn't. I was at college on a football scholarship. Then Jason says Brittany asked him to get married. He said, we felt like this was a way we could be together. Brittany was already feeling trapped with everyone making money off of her. And Jason says they figured that if they were married, they, the powers that be, would have to let Jason and Brittany see each other. According to Jason, within hours of their wedding, lawyers, publicity people, and the management people came to the hotel and separated Jason and Brittany. Jason says they took Brittany in one room and put him in another, like a police interrogation. When she came out, she was a different person. It was like they had hypnotized her or something. 
Jason says they started putting all this paperwork in front of us to sign. Jason believes that is the moment when Brittany's team started to view her differently. If she could rebel and sneak off to get married, they didn't have enough control. That's when they finally started getting really tough on her. She was put into a gilded prison. Brittany and Jason were each convinced to annul the marriage and each were sent on their merry way. Many theorists claim that Jason never heard from the quote, real Brittany ever again. And from this moment on, he was actually speaking to an imposter. However, whether he's really talking to Brittany or talking to some fake, that'll probably forever remain a mystery. Anyway, so their marriage gets annulled and what was the reason? That Brittany apparently quote, wasn't of sound mind. This is back in 2004. The conservatorship was until 2008. This is the first documented time in history that Brittany's team would use her mental capacity as a means of control. And that control would very soon grow to every single area of Brittany's life. So remember, all that happened in January, 2004. As the months went on, Brittany would become increasingly frustrated with the amount of control the people around her had on her life. And by late July, she had snapped. Brittany would consult with some of the industry's best lawyers to establish a trust meant to protect all the assets she had worked so hard to earn. And on July 24th, 2004, the SJB 2004 Revocable Trust was established. Now this whole video is about that trust, the SJB trust. But before we get into the nuts and bolts, let's finish out this 2004 timeline. So we're still in the year 2004 and Britney's little sister, Jamie Lynn, had just been given the starring role in a new kids show that was literally written for Jamie Lynn by Nickelodeon's most infamous creep. Dan Schneider. So while all this stuff is going on with Britney getting married and starting trusts, Jamie Lynn was filming the pilot episode of Zoe 101. Now, Jamie Lynn had signed a development deal one year earlier with Nickelodeon to star in the spinoff from the wildly successful skit comedy show, All That. Britney's brother, Brian Spears, was made to be an executive producer on the show, thus catapulting him into the world of Hollywood individually. When Jamie Lynn signed the development deal with Nickelodeon, in 2003, Jamie Lynn wasn't nearly as big of a star as she was about to become. From all reports I could find, it seems like this was Brian's first real job, like ever. And Brittany was happy for Jamie Lynn and Brian for getting jobs, just like any normal sibling would be. The dangers were lurking just around the corner. Hollywood now had its hooks into both Jamie Lynn and Brian. Both of them now had something to lose something that could be taken away. And that kernel of fear that Jamie Lynn and Brian had to lose their newfound notoriety would be exploited to the fullest capacity by these Hollywood piranhas. And before you knew it, Jamie Lynn and Brian would turn into piranhas themselves. Now remember, 2004 was also the year that represented the longest gap between albums for Britney Spears, besides the one we're currently experiencing. And in December of that year, 2004, Britney had truly and sincerely had enough. She was tired of every Everyone controlling every move she made, and she knew that she needed to make a big move of her own. The story goes, on December 30th, 2004, Britney herself made a surprise appearance at a radio station in Los Angeles to premiere a demo of a song called Mona Lisa. She had called the radio station in advance, but they did not believe it was really Britney until she walked through the doors with a CD in her hand labeled Mona Lisa. The song describes the fall of a woman named Mona Lisa, who is apparently an alter ego that Britney Spears used when she needed to get things done. She's been cloned. That's the song where it says she's been cloned. She's been cloned. So the song calls Mona Lisa unforgettable and unpredictable and warns listeners not to have a breakdown. She wanted the song to be included on an upcoming album tentatively entitled The Original Doll, which Britney hoped to release probably before summertime in 2005 or maybe a little sooner than that. But after this impromptu appearance, Jive Records announced that while Britney had been in the studio, no album was scheduled for the moment and there were no plans to serve Mona Lisa to radio stations. Good luck with your album. It's untitled. It's unti It's probably going to be called The Original Doll. So. And it's half done? Yeah, it's halfway done right now. All right, so maybe by the summer, maybe yeah. by the fall? Yeah, maybe a little bit earlier. All right, and I know, I know everybody's going to want to hear the new single over and over, so I'm going to try to play as much as I can, okay? The new Mona Lisa. Hot. It's just a taste. By all appearances, it looks like Britney is starting to try in 2004 to take control not only of her own life, but in particular of her own career by releasing and leaking these songs. And then there is a big disagreement 
publicly between the record label, Jive, and Britney over whether she's gonna put the song out. Several weeks later, Britney said, quote, I can't really say it's an album, but I have something going on and it's definitely a show. The project was seemingly abandoned though, and Britney turned attention to her reality show, Britney and Kevin, Chaotic. How do you feel? I think he was just shocked when I said it. I love you. There was a couple of times that she threw me off and I was just like, whoa. We really are about to get kidnapped. Why have they got army hats on? This is it. I'm about to die. They're going to kidnap me and take me away forever. And the EP, which is the extended play of the same name, where the final version of Mona Lisa did eventually appear. Now, Britney never spoke about the project or Mona Lisa ever again. When she was asked about it a decade later in 2014, her manager, Larry Lizard Rudolph. Larry is my manager. He's been with me from day one. Said that he was not, quote, supporting, commenting on, or providing any further info for a bullshit story with zero factual basis. It makes me wonder, does the same person person who writes Mark Leitch's PR statements write Larry Rudolph's because this is the same type of thing they say. However, multiple songs would leak from that supposed project and the words Mona Lisa would be printed out in the Do Something video. Either way, Britney was clearly rebelling and her team was showing the very first stages of the true control that they would take over her. What started as an annulled marriage would eventually become a lifelong battle with Britney's family over control of her own life, her own body, and her own money. Okay, so now that we got the lay of the land, kind of figured out what was really going on in Britney's life in 2004, how she was sort of wrangling control of her artistic expression and her body and all that from Jive Records and her family and all of that, let's move on now to the actual trust, which is the main point of today's video. That's called the SJB Trust. The purpose of this is we're trying to follow the money. We're trying to figure out what's going on with Britney's money because it's clearly not gonna happen in the courts. It's taking them way too damn long. So on July 26th, 2004, a mere six months after Britney and Jason's marriage attempt and subsequent sabotage, Britney would enlist the help of industry leaders to establish the SJB Revocable Trust. She transferred substantially all of her assets into this trust. And I'm talking about everything from furs to jewelry, to cars, to clothes, businesses, everything that Britney could transfer into the trust, that is what she did. I know a lot of y'all don't know what trusts are, how they work, and to be honest, I'm not an expert, but I have a little visual aid here for you. So I have a little visual aid here. Okay, so here's her trust. And just think of it as this. This is all you need to know about a trust. It can hold things. It can hold things and technically, I guess, own them, okay? So she put her cars in there. Everything she owned, she put in there. Oh, she won a million dollars at the casino. Yeah, that. And she put jewel. She put jewelry in there. Okay, so this is everything Britney Spears owns. Well, let me get her plane. Hold on, let me get her private jet. And she put her plane in there. Okay, so here's the trust. This is all the things Britney Spears owns in 2004. Everything she owned, she wanted to put in there. You put everything in there. Oh, hold on. She didn't put her money in there too. There was bank accounts, okay? Bank accounts went in there. Oh. Like I'm at Punjabi wedding. Here's Britney's trust, got it? Established in 2004, got it? Okay, good. Now, Britney made herself the sole beneficiary of the trust, which meant that during Britney's lifetime, because she was the beneficiary and because Britney is the one who set up the trust, which is the set lore of the trust, Britney was the beneficiary of the trust, which meant if the items would leave out of the trust, they still belonged to Britney. And this was supposed to be in place until Britney herself changed the terms and conditions or whatever of the trust. Now, when I was in law school, they told us that the reason for trust is to quote, keep your assets out of probate. Well, that's just like a, a thing they say. It doesn't actually keep your stuff out of probate and you'll see what I mean by that in a second, but people put their stuff into a trust to protect their assets from being forcefully sort of ordered to give to someone else or something like that. It's supposed to protect the assets that you put in a trust, supposed to, but from all of the stuff that I've looked into over the last three years with these trusts and the probate, it does serve some type of a small hindrance, but it is not foolproof. You can definitely get a trust into probate court through a conservatorship and we will talk about that shortly. 
Now, in the formation of the SJB Trust, Brittany put herself as the sole trustee of the trust. And that basically just means that only Brittany Jean Spears was allowed to make any changes to this trust, to amend it. Also, as the sole trustee, Brittany would be in charge of the administration of the trust. So basically how the assets would be handled. Let's say it was some of this cash, maybe she would be in charge of giving it to a, an investor firm to invest it for her and maybe try and get some type of returns or whatever. And apparently Britney Spears was one of the early investors in Uber. So Britney set up the trust such that if or when she were unable to serve as trustee, namely because she would pass away, three people were supposed to step into the role of trustee. Britney herself put these three people in place. If she were to pass away, these people would step in and be the trustee and they would administer the trust in the way that Britney Brittany wanted it to be administered. These people were as follows. The first person was a man by the name of Ivan Tabak. Now he is currently working at Skadden, which is a big law firm. It's like one of the top three law firms in the country. And he's basically a lawyer. Now way back in 2004, which is almost 20 years ago, it is said in court documents that Ivan helped to set up the SJB trust. And so for that reason, he had knowledge of what Brittany actually did want with the trust. The second person that Brittany put into place to take over if she were to pass away was her brother, Brian Spears. And at the time he was working as an executive producer producer on Zoe 101 with Jamie Lynn Spears. Now the final person that Britney did put into place to take over if Britney were to pass away, take over the trustee administration role was some random woman by the name of Stacy Smith. But whenever the rubber met the road, Stacy Smith declined to actually be the trustee. So for that reason, um, she actually doesn't end up becoming important. Now, the purpose of the trust was to protect the assets that Britney had worked so hard to earn. And Brittany even included a provision in the trust for what was supposed to happen if she was deemed mentally or otherwise physically unable to be the trustee of the trust. Now, according to Brittany's established procedures, before those three people, Ivan, Brian, and Stacy, could even come in to take over the role of trustee as trustee, before they could even come in and be considered, something was supposed to happen. Brittany made these rules for her own assets, for her own trust. That's what we're supposed to be allowed to do. The provision said, if by reason of illness or mental or physical disability, before anybody could determine that Brittany didn't have the right to manage her own assets, two separate doctors who were both at the time practicing medicine were supposed to put it in writing that Brittany could not handle her own financial affairs. Brittany put that into her own trust. She said, if anybody of these three people, look, if I'm unable to take care of my trust, these are the three people I want to put into place. Either Ivan Tabak, Brian Spears, my brother, some lady named Stacy Smith. But before that can happen, it can't just be any old person saying that I'm not capable. No, 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 no. I need two different doctors who are currently practicing medicine to put it in writing. Brittany Jean Spears cannot take care of her own money. Then if that happens, then those three people, Ivan, Brian, and Stacy can step in and take over as trustee. And then Brittany would be removed as trustee. There was a provision to protect Brittany from exactly what ended up happening to her, and it was ignored. Let's get into how that happened. So after Brittany established the SJB Trust in 2004, her ownership in substantial bank accounts and substantial brokerage accounts was also transferred to the trust. So that's what this is. So that was all in 2004. So fast forward to 2007, where Britney's life was at one of its most hectic points to date. That was the year of the infamous head shaving and the umbrella paparazzi incident. Britney would face an intense intervention orchestrated by her management team, members of her family, and a Hollywood sober coach and interventionist named Betty Wyman. Brittany would endure her first psychiatric incarceration in 2007 at Seder Sinai Hospital. And by January 31st, 2008, three years after Brittany and her childhood sweetheart, Jason Alexander said, I do, Brittany would be detained at the UCLA Medical Center against her will for nearly two weeks. She was not permitted to leave under any circumstance. And it was all enforced by the force of the police state. The police department brought her there. Now, during this involuntary hospital detention in February, 2008, Brittany would be indefinitely stripped of her most basic and fundamental rights as a US citizen, including the right to choose her own medical treatments, her right to travel, even her right to so much as leave the hospital while the most important aspects of her entire life were being decided for her by strangers. 
She was stripped of her First Amendment right to freedom of speech and free association, her Sixth Amendment rights to a fair trial and the choice of her own lawyer. Britney tried to hire a lawyer and the judge wouldn't let her have that lawyer. Britney was stripped of her Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment rights of due process and equal protection under the law. And that's just to name a few. So Team Con, the conservatorship team, filed to put Britney into a conservatorship on February 1st, 2008. And by February 14th, 2008, Britney was in a temporary conservatorship. According to court filings, at the time of the establishment of the conservatorship, virtually all of Britney's liquid assets were in the SJB trust. So basically all of her money was in this trust whenever she was put into a conservatorship. Now, there were two conservatorships put into place over Britney Spears. One was called a conservatorship of the person. One was called conservatorship of the estate, okay? And again, this is never supposed to be in probate court. Not supposed to be in the probate court. It ended up in there, you'll see how. So Britney's dad, Jamie Spears, was put in place as the conservator of Britney's person, her body, her bodily needs, and a man named Andrew Wallet was installed as the conservator of Britney's estate. Now, Britney would later allege that she hardly ever spoke to this man, Andrew Wallet, in the entire time that he was supposed to be making decisions in her financial best interest. So it's unclear why or how this particular man was chosen for this very astronomically important job, but he was, and he served in that role for a very long time. Now, as a result of the court imposed conservatorship, Britney was deemed by a judge who didn't even bother looking at her or getting a doctor to attest to this before she made the decision. Britney was deemed to legally be unable to serve as trustee of her own trust that she started, even though they did not get the written opinion of two doctors then practicing medicine that was expressly written by Brittany into this trust. No, no, she's, nope, she's too stupid and incapable of taking care of her own money. She's too incapable of taking care of her own trust that she started, the money that she earned. So the, the judge was basically like, we're not gonna have these two doctors do that. Like, no, just by virtue of Reva Gates just deciding that Brittany was incapable and incompetent, then that was just enough. There was no proof. There was no proof. There was no proof. The judge didn't even look at her. There was no signed doctor's evaluation that said Britney couldn't manage her own trust. The judge just took Britney's family and Team Con's word for it, and nobody ever checked on it for like 12 years. Now, the judge in the case also did not allow Britney to choose her own lawyer and decided to impose a scheming sneaky snake lawyer down Britney's throat, who was in on the scheme the entire time. Y'all know that's Sam Ingham with his mouth breathing ass. Now, under the established trust procedures, Ivan Tabak, the guy who helped Britney set up the trust back in 2004 and Brittany's brother Brian took over as co-trustees of the SJB trust back in 2008. Now this allowed them a bunch of powers, but it was basically the same powers that Brittany had before she was removed as trustee. So by March, 2008, like literally the very next month after Brittany was put into this unconstitutional conservatorship under which she could not even legally enter contracts or control her own money or even choose her own lawyer apparently, Team Con put Brittany to work recording the Circus album. The month after she got put into this conservatorship, they have her recording the Circus album. The Circus album would then be released that same year in December to coincide with Britney's 27th birthday. The circus tour to go along with that album would take place the very next year in 2009. So I guess she was too sick to be in charge of her own money, but she wasn't too sick to generate enough money to support hundreds, if not thousands of people. Still haven't really gotten a good explanation for how that really worked out. By July 31st, 2008, five months into this temporary conservatorship, Jamie and Andrew, in their capacities as a co-conservators, went ahead and decided that it was in Britney's best interest that Andrew and Jamie own one of her most lucrative and profitable profitable business enterprises, which was Britney touring. They said it was in Britney's best interest if they owned her assets and they owned her property. Yeah, that's, that's what they said. And then the court agreed that it was in Britney's best interest for her not to own her own assets and her dad and her some random man she didn't even know to own it instead. Now there are many of these, but just as one example, we'll look at a 2008 minute order that shows that at least someone at this courthouse knew that something was going on over here. Something was a little amiss. And you can see it in the probate notes or the matters to clear section. I'll put it up here, whatever I'm, what I'm looking at. But there's these matters that are still open on the docket or whatever for the court's consideration. And look at these matters with me together. As you can see, letter B says, are there two doctor's statements stating Brittany is unable to manage her affairs? So there's no documentation on file from the doctors that says that Brittany is unable to manage her, her affairs, first of all. And there's this whole other issue of whether Lynn Spears was also trustee of a trust created at the same time. But I have no further information 
information on that other than these sentences in the notes on these minute orders. So I don't know, like you see letter D, are two trusts created under this instrument? Any intent to replace Lynn Spears as trustee of trust created under paragraph one of subdivision D of article three? So it appears that Lynn Spears by default became trustee of some trust that was created when Brittany was removed as trustee. But I'm just speculating. There's really no way to know because I don't have the trust documents. I just see this thing here, any intent to replace Lynn Spears as trustee. Now, fast forward to basically one year after the conservatorship was put into place. So we're in January, 2009, and the conservatorship was taken from being temporary to now being made permanent. Then in September 2010, right as Britney's dad, Jamie, was installing his friend and debtor, Lou Taylor, as Britney's business manager, Brian Spears just up and resigns as trustee from the SJB Trust, leaving our boy Ivan Tabak as the sole trustee. So Ivan Tabak is in charge of this by September 2010. Brian had backed out, conservatorship's permanent, and now Ivan is the trustee. Now we talked a little bit about this trust drama in the last video about the 600 million. Remember Jamie Lynn Spears, Britney's sister was appointed trustee in 2018. And then in August, 2020, Jamie Lynn was trying to get a court order to allow Stonebridge to be an investment advisor on this trust so they could get paid more of Britney's money. Go back and watch that one if this part doesn't make sense because I did make a whole video on it. it's the last video I made. But technically speaking, as I've mentioned a few times, SJB Trust was never supposed to ever make its way into the probate court or into the conservatorship. So September 2010, Brian Spears resigns as trustee and we don't know why. As you can see here, the document that explains why is redacted with these huge black bars from the public view. So like two days after Brian resigns as trustee, on September 23rd, Ivan Tabak, sole remaining trustee of SJB Trust, is already filling out papers to ask for the court's permission to change some of the stuff about the administration of the trust. Now the version available to the public is redacted, but we can still get some information here. Ivan lays out the purpose of his petition right out the gate, and he basically wants permission to give some of the powers that are technically his to other people, AKA delegate some of his trustee authority. Now, Ivan claims to have selected, quote, competent investment advisors that will work together to implement investment strategies for the assets in the SJB trust. But Ivan doesn't tell the public who these investment advisors are. Ivan wants to limit his own powers. He says he just wants to confer with these hand-selected investment advisors and review their little strategies periodically, maybe oversee the total performance of these strategies from time to time. But the big red flag here is the second purpose he lays out of his petition. And he says that purpose has to do with investing the SJB trust assets as a unified whole with the conservatorship assets. Now, when the conservatorship started in 2008, there wasn't anything in it because all Britney's assets were here, right? Remember that? It's two different buckets. One's conservatorship, one's trust, right? Here's where Britney wanted to protect her assets from going into the conservatorship four years prior. So there was nothing in there. But as the years would go by, new companies would be started. Jamie Spears would put things in there after making himself the owner. Andrew Wallet would sell things and things would. So eventually we do have a little bit of a nest egg starting to build up in here. Little by little, people would work to put assets into the conservatorship. And so by the second or third year of the conservatorship, there was something to invest there too. Now we got into this last time with Ms. Lou Taylor, how in this pot right here, they didn't put any of Britney's intellectual property, like they didn't account for it. So it was like all the stuff that they were making on her name, her likeness, her performances, her royalties and all that, it just wasn't getting reported to this. So who knows how much money was really in this thing. But you have two separate buckets of money, of assets that you need to manage, right? Ivan Tabak is the trustee of this one for you know two years, February 2008 through you know September 2010. He's the trustee and he's asking the court, hey, can we we invest this as a unified whole with this together, put them together, can we do that? But we'll, kill, we'll still keep them in these two separate buckets. Look, they're still in two buckets, but I wanna hand both of these buckets to the same people. And I want the same people 
to deal with these buckets in the same way. So if they're investing this at a certain percentage in a certain thing, I want them to do this too, together. Can we do it together? That's what they're trying to do. And so sure, is this being kept out of probate at that point? I, I guess because it's not this, but like it isn't. It's being invested by the same people and the judge in the probate court is making decisions based on it. Let me see, let me tell y'all what I mean. Remember the whole thing I said a few minutes ago about how SJB assets weren't supposed to be intermingled with the conservatorship assets because SJB trust was wasn't a conservatorship asset. This is kind of a loophole around that. See what I mean? Ivan wants the SJB trust assets to be managing separate accounts from the conservatorship assets, but he still wants the same group of people to collaborate, work together, and agree upon strategies to invest both pots of money in the same way. Ivan tells the court that the team's goal is a quote, unified investment strategy for the SJB trust and the conservatorship. So are they really being managed separately after all? Like when you really think about it, the same group of people is managing the money earned by the same person belonging to the same person in the same way and just slapping different account numbers on them. I mean, I don't know, a unified whole seems like to be a pretty self-explanatory set of words to me. I mean, what do y'all think? So in the same 2010 filing we've been talking about, the sole SJB JB trustee Ivan Tabak nominates an investment bank called UBS to take charge of the investment strategy for the SJB trust. So Ivan Tabak wants UBS, an investment bank, with these, who knows who the investment advisors are, put question marks because he does not tell us yet, but it's 2010 and he wants all this to be managed at a bank called UBS. UBS, if you haven't heard of it before, it's just like Morgan Stanley or anybody else, just one of those big banks or whatever. Now in that same filing, we are talking about the same filing from September, 2010 still. This happened two days after Brian Spears stopped being the co-trustee. He quit, he resigned. Two days later, Ivan Tabak makes all these requests to the court as the sole remaining trustee. Ivan tells the court that a team at Merrill Lynch, which is also an investment bank, will be taking charge of the majority of the conservatorship assets. So conservatorship, Merrill Lynch, SJB Trust, UBS, but UBS and Merrill Lynch gonna work together, they gonna be besties, they gonna be friends, and they're gonna do this as a unified whole if Ivan gets his way. So on the surface, it kind of seems like the assets would be handled separately and therefore satisfying the requirement to keep the trust and the conservatorship assets separate. But if you read the actual filing, everything's not quite what it seems to be. For one, Jamie and Andrew do want to invest some of the conservatorship assets with advisors at UBS. I don't know if it's gonna be in the same account or whatever, but Jamie and Andrew do wanna take some of this and put it over here at UBS. And the way that Ivan worded this 2010 petition to change investment powers, UBS and Merrill Lynch would be working together on strategies for the two separate piles of money to invest all of this separate money as a unified whole and all Britney's money from the trust and the investment managers would all communicate regularly and agree with each other on how they were gonna do it. So I don't know, I don't wanna beat a dead horse, but it kind of doesn't really look like it's really being managed separately. Now, notice how they vaguely just mention quote, experienced investment advisors, but then they fail to state any proper nouns other than UBS and Merrill Lynch. So to the untrained eye, it almost kind of looks like Ivan Tabak and Andrew and Jamie are just randomly choosing these particular investment banks because of the institutions themselves and the great reputation that UBS and maybe Merrill Lynch had. You would be wrong to make that assumption. Coming as a surprise to absolutely nobody, the court grants Ivan's petition. A few months goes by, now it's February 2011, and we're back at the courthouse again with Ivan trying to make more changes to the trust. So Ivan in February 2011, still sole trustee of the trust, where the majority of Britney's assets are, files another request with the court to modify that trust investment strategy yet again. He's not modifying the trust, just to be clear, he's modifying the strategy that they are using to invest the money that's in the trust. This time, Ivan wants to move institutions from UBS to Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley. So basically, Ivan wants the UBS people to manage this money. He don't really care about UBS. It's the actual advisors Ivan seems to care about. Ivan doesn't name names in that 2010 petition that we just looked at, but now he does. We find out that the UBS investment advisors who are responsible for administering the SJB trust assets are a woman by the name of Robin Krasny and a man named Mark 
Lewis. Now, Robin and Mark are still working together to this very day, and they still work with Morgan Stanley to this very day. Now, I don't really know who these people are, but they're definitely influential. I mean, I've heard of follow the money before, but Robin Krasny and Mark Lewis have some serious pull. If they can make the money from Britney Spears' estate, follow them. Not to mention just because they want to just change workplaces where they work. So Robin and Mark not only still work with each other to this very day, but they also seem to go way back. It looks like they've been working with each other for years, like maybe decades. They started with a company called KL something, and now they work at Robin Krasny's management group called Altera Wealth Management Group, which is still flying its flag under Morgan Stanley's umbrella to this very day. So in 2011, because of Ivan Tabak's filing, we do learn who is managing Britney's money, at least this group, you know, who's managing where the substantial majority of her assets were at the time, which is the SJB Trust, and that's that Robin Krasny lady and Mark Lewis. That happens in 2011. But it seems like they had been managing Britney's money at least since 2010, which is the same year that Lou Taylor got installed by Jamie Spears to be Britney's business manager, according to court documents. So fast forward from 2011 up to 2013. On July 9th, 2013, Ivan Tabak does submit yet another petition for another order modifying the investment strategy of the trust yet again. So this is the third time he wants to modify this investment strategy. But this time it has to do with how the funds are invested and not who is investing it or which institution is holding the money. I could get into all that on 2013, but it's just the point for this video, just know in 2013, he modified the trust strategy yet again. So fast forward five years, now we're in 2017, and Ivan Tabak up and resigns as trustee, which leaves, if you're following along, a vacancy in the role of trustee. Because remember, Brittany was a trustee. She had put these three people to step in and fill the role if she were not able to do it. Ivan Tabak, her brother Brian, some lady named Stacy. Stacy Smith said, no, nah, I'm not doing it. Ivan Tabak and Brittany's brother, our co-trustees for a few years together, and then Brian quits. Last man standing is Ivan as trustee. Well, he quits in 2017 as well, and there's a vacancy created. We don't know who becomes trustee in that meantime, but we will later find out who ended up being the trustee even through today. The very same year, 2017, Jamie and Andrew filed a petition with the court allowing them to basically step into the shoes of Brittany and make full-scale amendments to the trust. Remember earlier when I told y'all Ivan Tabak was not amending the trust. He was amending the investment strategy of the trust. But now in 2017, Andrew and Jamie, who had already appointed themselves some of Britney's assets in her best interest, Andrew Wallet also like bought one of Britney's cars from her at very, very below market value, right? So now here's Andrew and Jamie saying, we basically, even though Britney's not dead, even though she's still alive, we wanna step into her shoes, your honor. We want an order to be able to make decisions as if we, are Britney Spears. It's very weird because Jamie is purported to be going around always saying, I am Britney Spears. Like he really got off on the sick power that this conservatorship afforded him. And he never should have been given that power. He's a tyrant and a lunatic in my opinion. So Jamie and Andrew want to make massive changes to the trust too. It allows for them to change everything. Remember when Britney made this trust with Ivan Tabak all the way back in 2004? She made herself the trustee, meaning she herself, Britney, wanted to be the only only person with the power to make changes to this trust and it's her money. Well, here's Andrew and Jamie derping in over a decade later, giving themselves that power. And remember, this is years after they had already done been assigning Britney's assets to themselves in her alleged best interest. So the next year, May 2018, the court granted Jamie and Andrew's petition and made an order for substituted judgment, allowing Jamie Spears and Andrew Wallet to make changes or amendments to the trust for the first time since 2004 when Britney established it. They amended the trust pretty much immediately. These were the changes they implemented. Number one, Jamie Lynn Spears was installed as the trustee. As you can see, it also gives her the power to appoint a quote, institutional co-trustee. So like some kind of bank or investment advisor. It also discusses the procedures of how the trust should be managed after Brittany dies. Quote, blocked account means you can't make withdrawals, but you can get your fees paid. So it kind of, again, it looks like, oh, your honor, we're putting it into the block accounts so it's blocked you can't you can't just take money out of a blocked account without a court order yeah that's true in some cases but you know what you can get without a court order investment advisor fees so if an investment advisor was advising on Britney's trust they could negotiate their own fee with whoever's holding the money and be getting paid fees without the court ever approving that so it's really not that blocked after all 
Now, apparently they were also trying to make some changes on yet another trust that I had never heard of before. And that one was called the SJB 2004 Insurance Trust. But it seems like they eventually did withdraw that petition or the petition was withdrawn some other way. In any event, once I started talking about all this back in like 2020, Jamie Lynn Spears decided to go on ahead and withdraw that petition to let Stonebridge be the investment advisor. And again, Stonebridge is, it's important that Jamie Lynn Spears was trying to let Stonebridge get fees and be the investment advisor on this trust because Stonebridge was started and founded by Lou M. Taylor, who Brittany never wanted to be her manager, who was imposed upon her and who's largely credited with being the mastermind behind Brittany's conservatorship. Lou Taylor was Brittany's accountant, Brittany's business manager, the conservatorship accountant. She was brokering deals with her own self. She was likely getting fees from all these different hats that she was wearing. And there really was no oversight above Lou Taylor. Put on top of the fact that Lou Taylor had personal relationships with the Spears family and multiple conflicts of interest. She was a debtor to Jamie Spears when the conservatorship started, meaning she had loaned him money. They had financial incentives for Britney to be put in this conservatorship. They had financial incentives to take over Britney's money. And then once Britney was in the conservatorship, according to court records, they exploited those incentives and acted upon them, acting in their own best interest ahead of Britney's. Now in 2020, Jamie Lynn Spears was trying to give Lou Taylor's old investment firm, Stonebridge, all all of this to manage. Then I started making videos about it and she withdrew that petition. Timing is always right. So just to wrap this video up, I don't see any further indication on the docket that any changes have been made since Jamie Lynn Spears was made the trustee and all that. And I don't see any indication that any further changes were made to the trust on the docket. So it looks like these literal clowns, like what is Robin Krasny wearing? She's literally wearing a clown collar in her professional headshot. I mean, these literal clowns, like you don't even have the good sense to not dress up like a clown. Like, is this a humiliation ritual? Anyway, it looks like these literal clowns are still in charge of all of the SJB trust assets and investing them through Altera Group at Morgan Stanley and at least some of the conservatorship assets. And so I think that answers in large part the age old question, where is Britney's money? Look like it's over there at Morgan Stanley under these literal clowns. Oh, there's, there's one other lady. What's her name? Jill. She probably also works with it. But during the course of researching this video, I found evidence of at least three additional trusts, which might also house some of Britney's assets. So if y'all weren't completely mind numbed by this video and you do want to see the information that I found on those potential additional trusts, leave a comment below and I'll take it under advisement. In the meantime, that's all I really have for today. Facts ain't defamation. Love you, me to K. Bye.